Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Net present value in PV versus payback period. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, we're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side, calculating the net present value and the payback period starting with the payback period because we've been doing that in the past, but we'll do it a little bit more quickly here. If you want to jump forward to the net present value, the new stuff, which everybody's excited to be looking at, you can do so, but we'll start off and do the comparison on the side by side to emphasize the limitations in essence, typically of the uh, payback period. That's typically what these problems will be looking like. They're going to be emphasizing the fact the payback period is not taking into account the time value of money. And so keep that in mind if you're working like a book problem or something like that. That's probably the tilt that it will be taking. So we're imagining a long-term process that, that project or something, two projects we're going to be comparing. We've got to have an initial investment. We've got to put money down so we can get the money back. You've got to put money down to make money. That's going to be the 68000 And then we have the cash flow down below. We think we're going to get a revenue stream from that initial investment in investment one or investment two. You can call, you can call them in Y or X here. You can call them projects. You can have investments into machinery or equipment. You could put it into different types of businesses and whatnot. The same kind of conceptual calculation will be the same. We have an initial investment. We expect to get returns on that investment in the future. Then we got to think about which investment do we want to be putting our money into and which would we not want to be putting our money into. So let's go ahead and, and, and note there might not always be, of course, two options or we might have multiple projects we're willing to put money. We might have a lot of money or we're willing to put money down if we can get a return that's reasonable. So then the question is, well, which projects would be reasonable or not? Which would be worth our time? So let's go ahead and uh, do our first calculation, which will just be the what's our net cash flow over this full time range. Let's say we're going to put down the 68,000 minus the sum of in year one, we're going to earn back 50,000 in investment X, then 20, then 25. That means that we're going to get, we're going to generate then, hold on, something went horribly, horribly wrong. This equals the 68,000 minus the sum of these three items, closing that out. So we got 27,000. 27,000, that's income, even though it's a negative number because the inflows are greater than the initial investment. Let's try project Y, same calculation. We're still putting in the 68,000 minus the 46 we get in year one, 19, year two, 30,000, year three, closing that back out, 27,000. So they look even if we don't take into consideration time value of money or when we're going to get paid back the initial investment. First, looking at the payback period for investment X. So this is going to be the in initial investment. Then uh, I'll just say investment. I don't need an X there because that's in the title. And that's going to be equal to we got the 68,000. And then we'll just do our cash flows for year one, two, three. So I mean, though, I'm going to center those alignment and center to make them look nicer. Doesn't it look nice like that? Way better. And then this is going to be equal to the 50,000. Going to use the auto fill to just populate the 20 and the 25 because that's the coolest way to do it that I know of, at least. I'm going to auto fill handle that down and drag it down. So there we got the 50, the 20, the 25 matching what we have down here and now we're simply going to do our running balance calculation this being the 68,000 we got to cover minus the 50,000 almost there already after the first year but we have 18,000 not yet covered 18,000 minus the 20 we're going to get back in in year two and now we're over so now we got the 2,000 there is profit the 2,000 minus the 25 is the 20 is the 27 getting us to our 27 end of the day over here so the pay pack the payback happened. We got our money back sometime after year one. Let's calculate the partial year uh, for year one and something that we need to be picking up. So that we're going to say this is going to be equal to the amount that we still need. I'm going to call that the amount we still need, which is going to be 18. And compare that to then the next year's cash flow. Cash flow next year, which is going to be equal to the 20,000 underlining that hometown font group underline and then that's going to be the partial year calculation 
which will be equal to the 18 divided by the 20. And let's add some decimals there because it's partial year. We need like decimals for the, to show it. So the payback period, when's payback happen? Payback's gonna happen in one uh, point nine. And remember when you look at point nine, you might have to represent that in months or in days or in something like that. But I won't go into that right here because we've seen that in the past. I'm gonna hide then this investment. I'm gonna go from E to F, from E uh, to H, E to H. So we can hide those columns, let go and then right click and hide hide them then we're going to go to the investment why same kind of process same kind of thing starting off with the investment investment why i don't need the why why because the why is up top in the title and this is going to be the sixty-eight thousand. and once again we have the one two three years selecting those centering them alignment group center so they look nice and then we're going to say this equals the 46,000, 46,000. Then we'll auto fill it down, fill handle, grabbing it, dragging it down. So there's the 4630 to the 30, 46 to the 30. Then we're going to say we have 68,000. We invested minus the 46. We're going to get back in year one. 22,000 still has not been received back. We're going to take that 22,000 minus the 19,000 we get in year two. We have 3,000 still has not been received back. And so we're going to take that 3,000 minus the 30,000 we're going to get in year three. That means that we get paid back. Payback period happens sometime between two and three. Let's calculate that partial year. Partial year calculation then is going to be equal to what we still need, the 3,000. And the next year cash flow, what happens in the next year. That's what we're going to compare it to, the 30,000, underlining that font group, underline. That's going to give us our partial year calculation, which is going to be equal to the 3,000 divided by the 30,000. Or adding decimals, we're looking 10, 10, 0.1, 10%. Okay, so payback. So payback. When does payback happen? I want to know when payback happens. That's going to be at... Uh, two years, point one, two point one years payback, and then so if I unhide these, let's unhide some cells from C to I, C I, C to I, C I investigations, unhide, and so now which one, which one uh, would be better under these two conditions? We would have to say investment X because we got our money back sooner on investment uh, X. So that's going to be good for the payback period. Let's then go to the next the next item, which is going to be the net present value, the NPV. So we're going to have the same scenario, same information. We're just going to use a different method, which is going to be the net present value. So we still have the investment, the 68,000. And then we've got the 50, the 20, the 25 our discount rate, which is something that we're going to need for the net present value to help us to time value the money, is going to be the 12%. How do we get that? You got to take into consideration things like inflation and opportunity cost of what, what else you can do basically with the money. So we're going to say then 12% is going to be our discount rate to help us to present value the cash flows. Once we have that, then this is actually fairly straightforward. We went over present value calculations in the past. So we're not going to do it like mathematically or use the formula to calculate it because you can look at in the past if you want to do that that would be quite tedious if you have a stream that's not simply an annuity which could often be the case when you're looking at projects like this but the present value of one calculation is fairly straightforward uh, and there and you can use that of course for these calculations in excel so it works quite nicely to, to run these type of present value calculations. So you could say, I'm going to start at 0, 1, 2. I'm going to then select these items. I'm going to copy these down. I'm going to center them by going to the alignment and centering them. And then we just want to have our, our cash flows, the flows of money. So I'm going to start off with the initial investment, which is good, we're going to represent as an outflow. So I want to make it a negative. All inflows, I'm going to make positive. So I'm just going to say at period zero, we're going to invest negative 68,000. That is what it is because it's as of today. You could present value it, but it's as of today, as of zero. So it's going to come up to the same number. 
And then, of course, the inflows, we're just going to be picking up the inflows, which will be the 50,000. Same thing we've seen in the past. I'm just going to copy that, that down, copy that down to three years. We don't have a year four here. The year four is going to be the total. That's going to be the total that we have. I like that to be left aligned over here. Let's a little picky like that. And then I'm going to go to the font group and underline. And let's sum this up using the trusty sum function. This is where we were at, as you remember, the 27,000 not taking into consideration the present value now obviously if i present value the 68,000 at time period zero it still comes to 68,000. but sometimes it's useful to do it because you could still use it to copy the cell down so in other words let's do it just for the fun of it it's going to come up to the same number i'm going to say negative so so that i don't flip the sign instead of equals present value shift nine rate the rates going to be picked up at that 12 percent note we're picking something up that's outside of the of the table we're working in if that's the case if i want to copy it down i would have to absolute reference or use some mixed reference i won't do that now but i'll do that in a second so we're gonna i don't want to complicate the formula right now so the number of periods we're just going to say is zero which means like that's today so it's not going to be much different but and then that it's not a payment because it's present value of one not an annuity so comma comma or you could put a zero there and we're going to pick up the 68,000 and we get to the same 68,000 because we're at zero period if I do that same formula here for period one now we're bringing that 50,000 back from a year from now back to today so ne negative present value shift nine the rate is going to be the 12 percent again if I want to copy it down which we'll do in a second or later after we do this one by one the tedious way we'll do it the easy way then so we got the 12 percent and then we're going to pick up the number of periods which is just one here and then comma comma future value and enter so notice how nice and easy this is if you remember how to set the table up if you set the table up right this becomes quite easy to do these calculations you can do them very quickly and it's really really nice so negative present value shift nine let's do it again two years back we're going to pick up the rate comma the number of periods now two two years back comma comma because it's not an annuity but present value of one so we're skipping that or you can put a zero there if you want you can put a zero there if that makes you feel better it used to make me feel better but i'm i don't need it anymore i felt like that was a crutch for a while but i've gotten rid of the crutch and then we're going to say there's that and enter so there we have that let's do it one more time negative present value shift nine the rate is going to be then the 12 percent comma number of periods now three periods back that we're going to bring back to the current period comma comma chameleon comma comma come and then we're going to say this one's going to be the 25,000 25,000 and enter so there we have it and you could sum that up now if you want to do that faster because that could seem quite tedious if you're not quick at this you could say, can we autofill this down? Yes, you can. We can autofill that down. So let's delete this. And that's why you might want to do it for this first one, even though you don't need to, because then everything's uniform and you could just copy it down. So even though this one comes out to the same number, I'm going to double click on it. That rate right there, if I copy it down without changing that rate cell because it's outside the table that I'm working in, it won't work, right? I got to make that an absolute or mixed reference. I just make it an absolute reference, putting my cursor in N12, selecting F4 on the keyboard. That puts a dollar sign before the N and 12, making it absolute telling Excel. Don't move that one down. Like when I copy it, don't leave it. Leave that cell where it is when I copy it, Excel. So we're going to say, okay. And now let's do our thing here. Where we're going to take the fill handle, drag it on down, drag it on down. And there it is, it did exactly what we wanted it to. And so now let's sum it up, equals the SUM of these items. So there's the present value. There's no present value. There's the present value using the discount rate of then the 12%. Let's compare it to Y using the discount rate. Why? Because that's the other project. So zero, one, two, three, and then the total. And then let's make these centered by going to the alignment and centering them. Cash flows are going to be equal to the 46,000. And then I'm going to copy that one down, copying it down. There we have it. And then uh, hold on a second. Hold on one second. 
period zero needs to be the investment, the negative 68,000. That's the investment. That's important. Got to have that. It doesn't make any sense if you don't have that. All right. And then we can copy these down. And then I can sum these up. Let's underline here. Let's go to the font group and underline. Let's put an underline here too, because I feel like that's, there should be one. And then this equals the sum of these. That's going to be our 27,000 again that we saw before. Now we're going to do our present value. Same kind of thing. Negative present value shift nine rate. 12% the rates outside the table. So if I want to copy it down, I'd have to present value that but I'll do that in a second comma, number of periods zero comma comma, because it's not an annuity, but present value of one 68,000 same number because we're at period zero. So it didn't do anything present negative present value shift nine rate is going to be that 12% again, comma, number of periods one now one period out comma comma because it's not an annuity but present value of one future value one year from this time 46,000 that means present value 41071 let's do it again negative present value shift nine rate could can't we just copy and paste it down we can but we're practicing this is practice time number of periods is going to be two two periods out comma comma future value 19 and then one more time, negative present value, shift nine, rate is going to be that 12%, comma, number of periods three, comma, comma, because it's not an annuity, present value one, and the 30,000, there we have it. Now let's do it the easy way. I'm going to delete these and say, can't we just do that easy way? And like, yeah, we can, but only after we've done it the difficult way, because I don't know. Then double clicking on this, we want to make then that 12% because it's outside the table. Typically, if it's outside the table, that's the one we have to absolutize. That one's outside. We're going to say Excel. Don't move that one. Don't move that cell. Don't you move that cell when I copy it down. And by doing we're going to, but to do that, we're going to put our cursor in L, L, N12, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the N, dollar sign before the 12. Enter. And then we'll grab that one, grab the fill handle and drag it down so it fills stuff. And then we're going to go to the font group, underline, my voice is gone. Coffee cleared that up. All right, so then we're going to sum this up. This equals the sum of these. And there we have it. So, so there we have the sum. So obviously on this one, we have, if we, were to, if we were to value this now, we're saying present value at that discount rate is the 9572. Now this gets a little bit confusing because you might use this discount rate as kind of a hurdle rate. So you might say, hey, I'm going to pick, I have enough money to invest in both projects. And if you're over the 12%, then if I get a return of the 12%, anything over that 12%, maybe I would think about investing. So that in that case, you might say I would invest in both of them at that count because they're both over the time. Or you might say, hey, I've only got the 68,000. I can invest in one or the other. And based on this information, you want the one that's higher after you hit the rate. So this, this X would be better in that situation as well. So I was thinking when starting this problem that we would end up in a situation where we would have a difference in the opinion between X and Y between the net present value and the payback period, but there's not. We, in, both, in both of them, we have the X being, being beneficial. X is beneficial here and we get payback sooner when we do the payback period. The net present value will most likely be the more reliable situation that we will be taking a look at. Note that because these two jobs are, are equivalent, they're like the same length, they're both three years on the payback, they both have the same initial investment, then it's likely that the payback period will, will end up with a similar kind of result because uh, if we get paid back, you know, if we get paid back sooner in the same time frame, then, then it'll probably have a similar kind of result as the time value of money. But you can imagine, of course, situations where if the net income was not the same, for example, or the investments were not the same, for example, or one had a three year payback period, and the other is going to be generating, generating re revenue for five years or something like that, a different time stream, then the payback period is, is going to have problems with anything other than just telling you how much you know, when you're going to get your money back. So note that the payback period, good, it's a good calculation to have, 
and it's one of both. So if I if I did this calculation with this particular scenario, this would further reinforce us. We'd say the payback period is showing us that I'm going to get my money back sooner. And if I just look at the pre net present value of the cash flows in terms of the total value of the investments uh, using a 12% discount, X is also uh, looking better in that situation. So that's how we would basically want to use this in practice. We would want to be doing multiple calculations, probably putting most of our weight when we're really on our just serious about the decision making in the net present value because it's taken into consideration time value of money. If you're working in a book problem, you want to emphasize that all the time. The, you know, the time value of money is what I'm going to depend on, you know, most of the time typically. But the net present value is another kind of tool to give multiple angles at looking at into the future, trying to predict into the future. We just little glimpses that we're trying to glimpse into the future in different angles to help us make a good decision.